you're in the right place. I need you to buckle up because we're going to take a quick tour and go through a lot of digital dust in a very fast pace. And at the end, fear not, I'm going to give you all the resources that you need. Then a second time through, second part of the presentation, I'm going to take a little more time. We'll go over the backstory, and there's a way that we're going to weave two other pieces into this. One is how to deploy these tools and resources in your programs. And then the second wave has to do with how to help, how to input your suggestions into these efforts. And then finally, I'm going to give you a little bit of the vision for some of the things that we have in store. Look back, it's a look forward, and it's a way to engage. We're talking communication, we're talking online cyber swimming. So I'm Mark Rodericus. You can reach me at my email at any time, mark at rodericus.com. That's my name, Mark Rodericus. You can find me on the internet, Google it, see me on LinkedIn, Let's Be, Facebook Friends, the whole works. The one job that I have now is being the webmaster at the International Swim Coaches Association. We often call it ISCA. It's a nonprofit membership organization. I'm also the head swim coach of the Ellis School. We have middle school and varsity swimming, it's girls only in Pittsburgh. I'm also the head guard and coach at the Pittsburgh Project. It's a faith-based organization on the north side of Pittsburgh, very much an inner city place. We've taken over a old public pool. I get to be the head coach of the Duquesne University club swim team. Men and women we swim up on the bluff. I'm also working with Pittsburgh Renegades, a master's water polo team. And I'm also the executive director of Squim USA. I've developed for the last 10 years Squim and water polo camps. It's with Pittsburgh Public Schools Summer Dreamers Academy. And we also get to have Saturday swim school for fun. Now on the slide here, you'll notice one is in black ink and the other is all red because all those other red projects just got blown out of the water come 2020. We went to the state high school swim championships and our swimmer wasn't even able to hit in water for warm ups and we were told to do a U-turn and head back home. Frustrating year. Almost all of my programs have been blown out of the water, but I've been able to dive deep and dive long into some really cool online projects. And I'm hopefully going to show those. So once upon a time, we're going to tell stories, stories, widen perspectives. Our kids at Summer Dreamers weren't being able to go to the pool, but we had cyber swim camp. The kids gathered at Summer Dreamers online for 27 days, and I had them for one hour a day. And I'm going to try to teach swimming through the computer to a bunch of kids that were in um, grades four and five. On a regular year, I'll be gathering with them at lunchtime and we're going to tell them what we're going to do. We're going to go outside and warm up with some exercises. Then we're going to run one mile to the pool. We'll swim for about two hours and finish up with a game of swim after our lesson. And then when it's time to get out, we'll dry off, come back to school. And halfway on the way back, you're going to see Coach Mike over there and he's going to give you an icy. Don't you litter. And are you ready to have some summer dreamer fun at Squim and Water Pole? Well, all of that went out the window. And so we went with a new pr approach. I call it S6 for the Sport, Spirit, and Soul Song and Story Summit. So I was on a mission this last year to collect stories. We got a little coverage in Swim, swim World and Swim Swam. And now there are more than 80 stories. At the time of camp, there were 30. Often we would gather, run a mile downtown. But this whole site of S6, the Song and Story Summit, was for gathering stories. We have a um, collection. And there's um, a way to navigate all 80 of these stories. Some of them you're going to recognize. Some of them you're not. Um, some of them were first-person stories. Dara Torres, a gentleman that um, does Iron Man without legs. This 
story is an important one. It ran on the Super Bowl. A story about snow and Chris Rock, Katie Ledecky, swim like a monkey, this guy runs on water. Do you ever heard of a sea monkey? Bruce Wagner talks about um, a Pacific hero. Wading in the water is a film. We had some poetry. Swimming to the other side. It's a song from Emma's Revolution. There's another movie from Arizona. A story about a boat. Bottled water. This is about steamboat races back in the day in Pittsburgh. And Captain Posey, this young gal, found a Viking sword when she went swimming in a lake. There's a tour about the riverboat engine. My Octopus Teacher, it's a longer story. It's a film on Netflix, but we just show this, the trailer. The Day of Giants, Paha Beach. Wildwood, New Jersey is a story. How about some photos? Guy goes fishing, he's fixing a boat. Sandbagging with Jimmy Chin from Yeti. And then we got some nice wave stories. A story by Gary Hall, his apartment mate, Mark Spitz. Natalie Hines, Kevin sings a song, The Little Things. It's a great story. Meg tells a story, Diana and I at Swim to the Island in Senegal. Um, Aria did a custom story for us. She was a swimmer in our high school area and um, then went on to MIT, English Channel's Crossing Stories, a butterfly song. Ha, ah, we know this story. Rise and swim. I got to meet Gary Hall Jr. Hey, at an NDPA event a couple years ago. This is a beautiful animal and water story. So there's 80 of these. There's a college swimmer that saves three in a lake. The Ted story with Tiffany and water as being a human right. Friendly play with dolphins. Um, Luke from the UK tells his story about a new pool game, which is swim. This is an epic night commercial. So I would stage these stories, and each day at camp, we would hear some from you know the tops, like Michael Phelps, um, getting out of the ice. Dave tells a great underwater story. This is me and Dave. Um, this woman falls off a cruise ship. Paul gave us a story from Fish Aquatics. Uh, he had a um, cap collection. He would trade caps. Did you hear about the whale that landed up in the jungle? Um, this is um, lots and lots of story. My sister told us a couple stories the kids really like. Tubing down the river and then comes a storm. Simone Manuel's story. Wayne Goldsmith told us about swimming parents. Tan was our teacher. This is a, a Summer Dreamers from a past year. Tan's the guy in the middle. He um, then went to Penn State, plays some club water polo now. He's a very good water polo player, but he went abroad and played in the summer the year that he was working with. Um, so um, Coast Guard offered a story. My cousin offered a, about these frogs jumped in the pool. Here's a, a surf cliff rescue story. So there's all different types. You probably know this guy. He does 1% better every day. Jan told a story to us. Um, fishing story. Michelle told about her final swim meet. And um, here's our friend Kevin. He's on the program. He gave us three stories, a fish tank story. Um, Suzanne told a story about um, being in Kona. And this is a very popular one, Jim Gamble. He's a black gentleman in the photograph. He then came and swam at the University of Pittsburgh. And um, his story's been traded a bunch. Um, talked about Anthony Nesty. Um, Trevor gave a wonderful story. Kevin told about fins. Um, useless machines got something from Dolly and message from Texas um, in chat um, he is um, I was able to interview him in this summer um, he's a butterflyer that beat Michael Phelps in the one Olympics now here's a great story from the moth about this um, older woman when she was a youngster she swam in the UK and um, we started off the whole season with uh, Mr. Eamon telling us about this greatest superhero of all time, which is Aquaman. And he just gives us the story of Aquaman. So there's a wide range of stories. And you've got stories, too. And I would love to have them recorded. And I would love to be able to include those in here. Now, as we've been going through the year, I've 
hear an interesting story. Maybe it's on NPR. Maybe it's on BBC. Um, maybe it's in pop media or popular news. I take those stories and I try to um, dust them off and put them in here in a presentable way so that they make a um, nice story collection all about water. But it's teaching the kids about things that they don't quite always understand in um, you know in different parts of the world so we're learning geography we're learning language we're learning how to make better decisions and um, this story collection is here for anybody to use and for anybody to add to let's talk a little bit about newsletters and how they're an awesome source a wide range of things my friend Steve Friederang has a competitive swimmer newsletter and it's um, full of interesting materials, Saturday Night Live routines, swimming with mammals and how they can teach us how to swim, some cartoons, flexibility, and some of his devices help with the, the ankle flexibility. The finish talks about the starts, swimming Everest, velocity meters, high hopes, stroke analysis, Saturday Night Live routines with Michael Phelps. He has a device called the ISO slide, some sports psychology materials, his pet peeves, how to use foam rollers, shoulder mechanics. And Dr. Keith Bell is in here now. He's a sports psychologist. So there is a ton of great information on the newsletters. Now, the other newsletter to mention is the ISCA newsletter. It's free. People can subscribe. It's full of awesome materials it's well cultivated there's a scientific committee that helps put it together pain and sports performance some things on shoulders um, we have our most recent webinar was how to work with a strength coach and we had a video about athlete mental health the isca newsletters are free anybody can log in enjoy there's a lot of very valuable content here all about various topics. Some of it is very swim specific, but others is not, and it's more general. So the Tri Coach Academy with Suzanne Atkinson is a medical doctor, and she gives her videos and her webinars away free to attend, and they're also free for about seven to 10 days after it happens. And then you can learn about COVID-19 or swim metrics, heart rate interval training, short course training, some programs about youth, exercise physiology and neck and shoulders. You can pay $200 a year and get into the membership sites and see these videos at your leisure, or you can subscribe to some of these newsletters and get notice and get a whack at them for free. Others such as Robert Strauss of South Florida, he's our friend, that has a worldwide audience uses Instagram and Instagram TV to talk frequently at 9 a.m. Eastern about teaching and loving our wee ones. Robert promotes valuable lessons to parents and guardians as many of them are teaching their own children how to swim these days. So I'm going to gloss over the social media aspects with Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and LinkedIn for the most part today because it's just something that we're all keenly aware of in our discussion of digital goodies. And you know, nothing would be complete without mentioning how we have to follow each other. And if we've learned anything in the year of 2020, we've learned to follow and interact with others, you know, even those who are outside our own bubbles. You know, so the silos sort of got us in trouble where we're not discussing things with each other as much as we should be. So you follow me, I'll follow you back. When I see something sweet, I'll share it. You know, so send me your information. Let's give Clubhouse a mention. Have you heard of it? It's a newish social media utility. It only works now with the iPhone, but it's coming in the weeks or months to come for Android users. But the podcasters and entrepreneurs and bloggers have sort of gravitated toward it. There's been things like with Shark Tank pitch meetings and the venture capitalist types. 
So it's just really for early adopters in a way at the moment. I'd love to get more people with swimming and aquatics on the clubhouse. We could talk about summer clubs and do a lot of discussions this summer with the Olympics. But it's much like an old school party line. It's only on your phone. There's no visual. They're not supposed to be recorded. But there's low friction for entry. So you can be walking the dog or doing the dishes or mowing the lawn and listening to some discussions on social media. Check out Clubhouse. Hook me up over there. If you need um, an invite, let us know. Let us know. Here's a soapbox moment. As an open source software advocate, in my humble opinion, I think competitive swimming is the tail that wags the dog too frequently in the aquatics world. You know, competitive swimming and aquatics need each other, and both need to get out of their tight lanes more frequently. And it's all about community wellness, and that's something for everybody. So the college programs are getting cut. We need the citizen voices to rise up and say, no, that's not right. But we also need more crossover among the competitive people to be part leaders in our community struggles for water safety. Now onto the fun part. The learning management system is with LearnDash from ISCA over at a site called read.swimisca.org. And it's full of courses. Now, some of the courses are paid. We're going to sort of gloss over them quickly. And the free ones are the ones we'll talk about now. We've already talked about the ISCA newsletter archives. But there are some things on race histories and roadmaps for swim coaches. The National Federation of High School Scholastic Sports has a COVID course. So if you have a course that's out there, I'd be glad to include those into this collection. But I wanted to concentrate first on this one called Get Your Feet Wet Swimming sort of set up with a digital badge. And it's something that we've used with our summer dreamers with Pittsburgh Public Schools. It's an introductory course about swimming and aquatic skills. It explains plenty of the terms and insights that the kids generally don't know about. So you can explore the concepts on the computer and we use a set of Android tablets give to the kids when we're in person or they were able to do this online on their own. So here's our course content, the beginning skills, basic swim safeties. There's a thing from the rip currents from the US Coast Guard, equipment insights. Then we'd go over each of the strokes from freestyle and back, breast and fly, talking about social skills of athletes and swimmers and the benefits and the beautiful and handsome with fluid and pleasing aesthetics of swimming. There's a chapter on fitness, motor learning and treading. Then there's dives, frozen water. There's a chapter on personal development and a history of swimming and water polo. So this takes about three to four hours for a middle school kid to plug his way through there. Now you have to log in and it'll keep track of where your progress is, but it's um, something we've used with the kids. And then as they get to a, a part of the course, submerging their face, but then we get the kids to sometimes pose for photos themselves. And then we update our photos and we put their images inside the course. And it's so cool for the kids. So we'll take the waterproof camera and we'll do bobbing and I'll get a bunch of kids to pose for bobbing pictures. And if they turn out well, then we'll go ahead and um, use those photos inside here. You're more than welcome to get your kids signed up to take this Get Your Feet Wet swimming course, try it yourself, then we'll be able to do it. This is one of my favorites is just to hold on to the kickboard, put your face under, and then we're going to learn how to roll over. Ah, you don't have to hold your nose. Then the kids can leave messages, but use these as a way to prep for our time in the pool together. Another fun course that we have at the same site, read.swimiska.org, is a class that I call Baywatch Brains. We use the um, running lifeguard here, and it's a challenge with five different quizzes. And it's a test, multiple choice, and you get to take the test to see how smart you are. And we've used this with our 
certification program with SQUIMP. It begins with um, a pre-flight with just two questions to warm up to make sure your device is working and such. You have to go through these in a um, specific order so that you can um, be ready to advance. And these are pretty simple questions. Level one with a quiz. Inside the learning management system, the questions are randomized as well as the answers. So this is a feature of LearnDash that we're able to use. So the kids can take the test in a classroom setting, all with computers, and it's not gonna be able to cheat so well. So let's just go over three or four of the questions. There's 25 in the first level. Is it best to swim only in a lifeguard supervised area and with a lifeguard on duty? True or false? I'm gonna say that's a true. And you can check your answer gives you immediate feedback, it's given your points, you're moving on to the next question. Simple online test taking. Question two, if ice is forming at the water's edge, it means that the winter is coming, the water is freezing and stay away, the water is colder than the air, or that the wind has been very strong today. So we're asking the kids to think a little bit about what's happening with the ice and the water's edge. So I think the water's freezing, you should stay away. We've used these quizzes too with the teachers. They can do one on the blackboard or maybe they can project it up and then we can take votes among the kids. And then you can send them home after they have their own login and password and be able to advance. So question three, pushing someone off the deck or dock into the water on a hot day is okay. If you know the person is a good swimmer, is that true or false? And we're not gonna push anybody in the pool. So I'm gonna say that's false. So you can sort of get the flavor of these somewhat simple questions, but it talks a lot about behavior and it'll also introduce some terms that they're not so familiar with. We love it because there's a number of levels and layers. They don't get much more difficult, but they get to be spread out. So this is what we've called at readswimmisco.org, the swim exams for the Baywatch brains. Now we're gonna jump those questions and quizzes to a different site, see a slightly different implication, it's different application as to how it works. The squim.us site has um, all information about our squim, but right on the home page is quiz your aquatic knowledge and earn progress with squim's digital badges. Now, when we take the quizzes here, it's gonna stay right on the home page and it's going to um, give you the same questions as before at an outdoor pool or else in a swim area at a lake when lightning or thunder is noticed by a swimmer or lifeguards, what's the best course of action? You know, check to see if the storm's headed your way immediately, but in an orderly fashion, get everyone out of the water, determine the time of delay between the lightning and the thunder or none of the above. So, we can take this quiz without signing in. If you advance, you'll be able to um, go on to level two. Is it okay to swim without a lifeguard present if you're with a friend or two? And with reinforcing water safety. And these questions, however, are not randomized and the answers are not this randomized. But after you go through these 25 questions, you'll get a score and it will give you an opportunity to sign in with your email address if you'd like to get on the email list or um, you can skip that option. So we've got the 25 questions in four or five parts for kids so that they can be well versed in water safety. But for you guys, if you have a set of questions or you have a test, module that you'd like to see online. I'd like to help. So you can send me the questions, send me the foils, send me the correct answers. We can work on the web delivery of this, and then we can put it as part of our SQUIM operations perhaps, but especially over at the ISCA operations with our um, global library. And then you can just refer people to these online tests and we'll be able to um, share the data, share the knowledge, and make a better experience for our um, youngsters who might be looking 
to gain some knowledge in the summer. And especially our phys ed teachers who are dying for something to do with these kids in a remote setting. Over at squim.us, there's a couple other light lessons. If you go up to the menu bar at the top of the page, you'll be able to click on the word lessons and um, see what's being offered here. There's the one that I often refer people to is I'm talking about Squim online and they go, how do you play Squim? Well, there's a basic Squim rules lesson here. It's just four lessons long and it gives you a very quick peek at how to play the game. So um, lesson one are um, four basic concepts. Explaining Squim is something easy. Do it with country club teams. Here we are in Greensburg, but there's no physical contact among players. It's a little bit like ultimate Frisbee. Sinking the disc is a loss of possession. Same in water polo. You're not allowed to have the ball under. And then you can't hold the disc for more than three seconds. And lastly, there's no airmail passing or shooting. That means if one person throws the disc to the other in the air without the disc touching the water, it's not allowed. And then there's ways to score. And it can be scored three different ways. It depends on your style of goal. Here you can see a little video, a clip showing some eighth graders at a junior high class. And that's the premier floating goal. And um, another way is slot style. That's when we play this at a pool when there's no goals. And you can play it a little bit like air hockey and just have the disc go into the gutter or into the gutter between two blockers. And the last third style is ultimate style. And that's when there's a, an end zone and you often in swimming pools get it beyond the backstroke flags, then you're able to score the goals. Now there's hopefully some new swim goals coming down the pike. They're always being sold at eLifeGuard or the American Red Cross. Um, so it talks a little bit about um, how we can play squint. Go on to the next lesson with some extra insights of where we played in different parts of the country. And then quick transitions and few interruptions. So it's a grab and go game. We like the kids to wear fins. It makes the swimming faster. It gets the kids in a horizontal body position. And um, fast play makes sense, but the kids have to think ahead. So often there's natural breaks within the action. The ball, the disc goes out of bounds, but I like to have two or three available so I can throw the disc right back into the game. Sometimes there's a jump ball where two players grab the disc at the exact same time. So we're talking about some of the um, more intricacies of maybe how to apply it. And um, it's very simple. And then we used um, a thing about team identification. We use headbands or ideal. Um, Sometimes the kids have worn water polo caps, but um, we've made some headbands. And um, team sizes, it's sort of an important distinction here. And our next video is going to show you how we play a game with 30 kids at one time. Now, you can never do that in water polo. Water polo is very specific with the exact number of kids and also the strength of the kid and the swimmer. So SQUIM is um, able to be more flexible and adaptable to a wide ranging group of um, participants, older adults as well as younger people. Um, so the ages can vary. Um, now, sometimes we'll do a little offsides or we'll rule against cherry picking. Um, sometimes we'll do a three point shot. Sometimes we'll double disc or triple disc. And um, we talk a little bit about what we generally do for a practice um, structure. So here, there's the official rules. Um, there is a PDF. If you have any questions, we'd love to um, interact with you and show you how you can put SQUIM into your programs.
That game had what I saw was about 30 players in a single game. Now, gameplay at camp or on a more regular basis often rises above into a different style of play. And if there were more focus among the kids in the pool, I probably would have double disc with that many kids. Play with two or three discs, it can get pretty crazy and wild. But we often will do that with, with a competitive swimming team when they're all on the same page. It'd be nice to move some of the older kids to deeper water in the mid pool and get a little more swimming. But as you can see, there's a lot of flexibility and freedom. The lifeguards got a little bit into it. They were off duty, by the way. And um, swim can be a lot of fun for many different settings, whether you're at the beach or with a mixed group of people. I love it when the dads get involved. So let's do a hard turn and pull back into the water safety realm. And I'm back at read.swimisca.org. And I want to show you a little bit about a course that was built based on free webinars. Our friends at the Great Lakes Water Safety Consortium, once the pandemic hit, had to stop their conference and went virtual. And they had water safety jam sessions. And they did a series of webinars once a week, I believe. And what I was able to do is take their safety tips and their content, which was um, here listed above, the first jam video, nudging people towards being safer around the water, high impact of water levels and beach erosions, all the way to um, jam number eight, boating and water safety craft and put them together in a course. It just strings together what is naturally on a YouTube videos in a YouTube station, but it keeps people, I think, a little more focused. So if you have course materials, or if you have a body of content that we can use as pearls and thread them together in a course, I'm all in. Send me an email. Let's collaborate and put together a course so that we're stronger, communicate in, a, in another way. I think it makes um, the content a little more timeless. It's great content, but now I can package it in a course. I'd hate myself if I had this opportunity and didn't talk a little bit about my life's work this last year, perfecting and building upon the global library for ISCA members. When the pandemic hit, I put my nose to the grindstone and we've created this resources, especially for swim coaches. It pays a little bit of money to be a member of the association, but there's more than 200 lessons and topics that are in here and broken down into different groups. Now, perhaps you're not a swim coach, but I bet you didn't have some coaches in your neighborhood or your community that would benefit from this, especially this summer with the revolving door of swim coaches the newer coaches, I think, are going to find tons of information in this if they become a member. And we have the lessons broken down into different categories. I'll go through these quickly. Strokes, skills, and drills. Science and research. The psych, the psychology, about building confidence and attitude adjustment and motivational gimmicks. And then chapters on management and programming, as well as masters in managing your meals. There are four pages of these. You could take the course in any order. There's a search bar at the top so that you can find something if you're looking on flip turns or butterfly or whatever topic it is. Interviews, where we've had some great coach interviews in the past. We also have a section on um, dystopia. There's training and exercises. And then there's the dystopia section with dystopia warnings. The bad, negative, horrible, injury, pain, suffering things are all lumped together, whether it's performance enhancing drugs and such. And then the last sections, technology. The blog at swimisca.org features an article that I really wanted to highlight to you. It's about open water swimming. We've seen more and more people go into open water settings. A lot of the swim teams with their pools were closed, went and swam in the lakes and rivers. There are people swimming off of Coney Island in New York. There are people swimming on the 
Um, West Coast too. So more and more people are swimming outdoors because of the limited availability or no availability of swimming pools. So we've published an open water swimming feature and I'd love for you to share that with people before they go out into the open water. It talks about some of the safety things to consider. It talks about how to um, move into a competitive situation in the open water. ISCA does host an open water swimming event. I like the idea of swimming with the buoys and the fins and perhaps even the gloves and the, the paddles. So if you have people that are interested in doing open water swimming, this is a nice tutorial, sort of gain some confidence and um, we can add to that as well and we'll be turning this into a course but it'll be free forever the open water swim feature at the blog at swimiska.org is ready for you to share and add to and talk about so here's another call for your engagement we've developed a site called pool p-o-o-l dot swimiska.org and it's talks about a little bit of how to um, construct a pool. But if you have any swimming pool news, we'd like to feature your pool on our blog. I get some things from the past, get some things from the future, get some interesting sites. We have um, lots and lots of content about pools and places to swim. So if you're interested in sharing, send them a note, we'll make a blog post about it. Two more pieces of information and it's call to action some of the kids might enjoy this as well as some of the adults so i'm a techie you know i'm self-taught you know i wasn't a computer scientist major but you ever seen one of these this is a computer about the size of a deck of playing cards there's usb ports in here this is called a raspberry pi you can put lots of things into this little computer put it in a backpack but I like the idea of talking about code among people of sport, among people of wellness, among people of fitness. Another trend that's going to be happening, it's already happening, is um, wearable computers. This is a device from AutoCoach in Australia, and it is something you, at the swimming pool, slip under your cap, and you can wear it, and it will speak to you. And the coach can use a stopwatch and wirelessly communicate to the swimmers. But there's a lot of other data and metrics that can come about here as to your stroke rates, your distance per stroke, your splits. And we like to use some pretty interesting stopwatches and technical devices. Another one is this guy. It's um, from PlaySense in, in Hong Kong. It's another piece of wearable device. You put it on the back of your cap and it has GPS. So when we do these open water swims, we'll be able to have a course laid out and people would know if they're on course or, or not. With the wearable technology and the code and the timing and communication devices with pace clocks and such using live stream at, at the pools for the meet so that the spectators can be there there's a whole realm of things related to time and code that if you're at all interested in we'd love to work in a collaborative way in an open source way to um, get these tools out and about to in conclusion understand that the international swim coaches association is a resource for you Come and consume our news, blog, social media, and courses. Perhaps you can deploy some to your populations. Let's also interact with your content. We want to collaborate, and we have many friends in various parts of the country. These scrolling teams are the ones that are attending our swim meets in St. Petersburg this spring. So perhaps we can help you with your network with local coaches and teams and advance your efforts. So we're looking forward to the other sessions and ongoing interactions. This is Mark Rodericus with the International Swim Coaches Association and SQUIM. Peace.